you know, they are comfortable being the underdogs. They are comfortable taking their swings. And I hope that they have come in here with some really good preparation because I do think that FlyQuest, as far as regional play, had the best level ones in the LCS as well as some of the best drafts to punish the tendencies of their opponents. You know, I'm always referencing back towards uh, when they actually baited their opponents into this Galio hard engage pick. They had the Swain ready for Power of Evil. They have had so many good level ones and early game pathing from Santorin is generally on point in the LCS. They have got to bring that sort of energy here to the world stage where we have seen level ones decide actually a lot of games. It has become such a core component at this world's group stage. And on the other side, man, we've talked a lot about FlyQuest, mm -hmm. but so far at Worlds 2020, Korea is showing up to play. We already have two Korean teams through to the knockout stage, and not just through, but taking the first spot in their group, DRX, definitely a competitor in their own right, that number two seed coming out of the LCK. Let's see how they want to address FlyQuest here in this first mm -hmm. matchup of this last day of play. Bands coming through. It's Twisted Fate, Nidalee, and that Caitlyn you were talking about that was so successful for DRX in that first game, all banned away by FlyQuest, while the bands from DRX, the Lucian that has been so powerful Powerful in the solo lane so far this tournament band away the Syndra going to join that one another solo lane band there targeting the mid power of power of evil this is a staple champion for him that we've seen from him plenty of times in the past and the final band in this first phase will be Volibear yeah so the only adaptation actually you know from that first time around was one ban on both sides you know FlyQuest actually did ban out in Italy as well as TF last time they dropped the Lucian ban because they were willing to first pick back and they actually banned out the Caitlyn on the other side we did see Syndra and Volley both banned out. The Renekton was dropped to pick up that Lucian ban. So very similar starts to these drafts overall. Santorin also was playing the Graves last time around. So we'll see how much parity there is, mm -hmm. you know, compared to that previous game, compared to that previous draft. Because I do think that both teams can come away from that thinking, hey, they were pretty comfortable with how it played out, but there's different ways that it could have gone if they played a little bit better. But Pioshek going to be grabbing the Lilia here. This has been a pretty highly contested pick at Worlds. There are very differing opinions on the strength of the champion, but one thing is certain, it is incredibly strong in these early game skirmishes at taking away their enemy Raptors, at going for this counter jungling strategy. And when you see a Lilia locked in, you have got to be ready for the level one invades. You have got to be ready to face up against Chovy on potentially a priority lane to give them that mid jungle 2v2 advantage so that they can invade the enemy Raptors and really start to take resources away from Solo. Wow, that was some fast lock-ins there in the second round of picks for FlyQuest. You saw them both get picked up at like the same moment. Mm -hmm. It'll be Jin for Wild Turtle, and Solo will be on the Orn here. So Orn again here for Solo. I do like this. I don't think that they're going to be wanting to play heavily towards him. Uh, and now the question is, you know, is there going to be parity? Is this a mid lane Jace here, or is it going to be sent up towards that top lane? Uh, there is possibilities that it can get flexed around. Uh, Chovy did not play a lot of Jace in the LCK, but neither did Doran, to be fair. Just one and two games, respectively, on the champion, so this really could go either way. And FlyQuest is going to have to take that into account. It makes your bans in this second round a lot more difficult. Very clearly, DRX is going to be targeting Power of Evil, and FlyQuest is going to try to respond here, it looks like, by targeting some more flex picks to try to limit the options and try to hedge their bets a little bit instead of just going straight towards, you know, like a LeBlanc and a, and a Syndra or whatever, and then having that Jace be swapped towards mid lane. Yeah, the Silas band out, we see that pretty frequently when having it as a possibility of dealing with Orn just because he can steal Orn's ultimate. Very, very effective theft on that one. Also has a strong lane matchup into the Orn itself. So that one's taken off the table. Both of these second phase bans are targeted towards Power Evil with the Cassidin now also being banned away. Okay. Now let's see what the last one will well, be here for FlyQuest. The Cassidin ban makes me feel like this is going to be a top lane Jace yeah. um, because that doesn't really seem to make a lot of sense. And if you're thinking about going for an AP mid and you already have Lilia locked in the jungle, then that is one of the situations where people can feel comfortable going towards the Cassidin if it is against double AP. So we'll see if FlyQuest has that same read or if DRX are just going to tip their hand right now. If they want to protect that solo lane pick, they can go for support, but you could leave that for counter later. It does look as though this is going to be the mid lane Galio top lane Jace. So that is the expectation. The Cassid and Ban, you know, kind of reading along with that as well. Of course, there is the possibility of it being something like a support Galio uh, yep. that is less common, but always got to keep it in mind. Right. You can never 
count anything out on the last day of groups. Teams can throw some curveballs in the draft here, especially if you've got that last pick on red side. you got to mm -hmm. find some of that counter pick value in it. So let's see what FlyQuest decide to go for. It's Thresh combined with the Jin. Okay. I like to see this. Jin's a champion that has no inbuilt escape mechanisms other than running fast once he manages to get that fourth <laughs> shot off. So always love to see a little bit of extra mm -hmm. protection for him down there. Now, what are they going to go for here for Power of Evil? And it's the Emperor himself, Sharima, returns to see if they can get FlyQuest the dub. Okay, very interesting. So if they want to go for Engage, I think the Pantheon would make sense alongside that Galio. This does give you the ability to roam. Just try to play heavily towards that Jace. Really snowball the game. You already have the Senna with the cross map ultimate to assist there. Galio can back that up. Now Pantheon with the Engage. You send Pantheon in as the hard Engage, as the delivery system here for the Galio. That can be a very deadly combo. So it was more using this support pick to facilitate what the composition wants to do rather than just picking straight up for this 1v1. Pantheon plus the Senna can still be threatening in that 2v2 with the point and click CC from the Pantheon to line up the route from the Senna. But I do think if they wanted to go more for that lane matchup, you could even be looking towards Morgana and those types of things for the Black Shield. So this to me feels more about the roaming here from Karia, which he is fantastic at doing and more about the engaged potential alongside Chovy on that Galio going to be a very interesting game and it feels like a, a really big pivot from what we saw last time where DRX was playing tank versus tank on the top side really emphasizing slamming bot lane in that 2v2 they could look to attack bot still but it does feel like a draft more designed to attack solo to try to get their top laner Doran in this winning matchup and really facilitate him as a split pusher as a way to break open the map and pull FlyQuest apart. Yeah, if Galio combined with a lockdown champion like Jarvan or Camille is a dunk bucket, then Galio combined with Pantheon is a meteor shower. The ability <laughs> of these two to work together, and all of a sudden you just have these two big old meatballs falling out of the sky, raining hell down on whatever you're trying to do in the side lanes or anywhere where you think you might have a man advantage. There's a lot of playmaking opportunity there for a team like DRX. And whether or not this duo can find success with that meteor shower execution, I think will have a pretty big role to play here in this game. I really do agree. It's it's really kind of the, the reverse roles, right? Where we saw Pantheon actually played by FlyQuest last time, and they were the ones that had to be able to nail these engages. They failed to do so, as we saw. You know, that Rift Herald fight really went bad for them in the first matchup these two teams had. DRX trying to split the map, trying to peel FlyQuest apart. You know, FlyQuest really wants to have their comp functioning as a 5v5, front to back, Azir behind the Orn, yes, Graves sir. and Jin there alongside you. You have Thresh to create space, drop the box, you know, add that CC in there. And DRX is looking to split the map, to pull you apart, to make you have incorrect lane assignments, to dive that, to punish that, and really to look for creative angles of approach. And I do think that's something that can play very heavily to their strengths. This is a team that is incredible as far as the team fighting, as far as the individual skill on these players. FlyQuest is such a solid team, but generally does not really fare as well in the split map style. You know, they're more about the 5v5, more about playing to objectives. So they've got to hold up in lane if they want to have a chance to do it. Well, here we go, kicking off the final day of groups play. Three out of four of these groups are decided. Six out of eight teams have progressed forward into the knockout stage, and we've sent six teams home. The fates of only four remain, and FlyQuest and DRX are the two teams most closely contending for one of those spots here when we look at them as the two middle teams in this final group. Taking a look at the keystones on your screen right now. Lethal Tempo for the Azir. This is a champion that we do often see different runes taken for. And Lethal Tempo lets me know he's going for that maximum team fight DPS. Mm -hmm. You can also see that this is Predator Galio has become more and more common because it is about surviving the lane, not necessarily thriving in the lane. It's about the engage, the utility that does give you the ability to you know, roam to the side lanes, to find flank engages with that Predator can be extremely powerful. And it's also worth noting that Jace is actually playing Conqueror. So this is more straight up for the 1v1 than something like Phase Rush, where you're going more towards the utility. That has been by far the most common rune. We'll see if FlyQuest can actually punish this because it's so much harder to escape if you are pushing as the Jace with Conqueror against the Graves plus 
or in combo than it is if you have phase rush where you just get a couple quick hits in and then you can just have the slow resist and just straight up run away from the graves and the red buff slow and the smoke screen slow and those types of things but if you get into an extended fight as the jace with the conqueror it's just straight up way more powerful as far as kill potential so We'll have to track this and see if Doran actually wants to go towards a full-on slip push build because we've been seeing almost exclusively lethality. But you still can do things like the Black Cleaver, Blade of the Rune King, and, and build towards that 1v1 and really try to slam this Zorn if you want. Yeah, Phase Rush Jace walks through a Graves W like somebody just walking past the smoking section at a mm -hmm. restaurant. It doesn't do anything to him. But considering the state of the Conqueror, considering the fact that we know what a CC machine the Orn is. Maybe Santorin will pay some attention up there. Remember, this is a player who, according to a lot of people, best jungle in A in terms of his performance, how much he affected the outcome of FlyQuest's games over the course of summer. He has put a lot of wins on their record in the jungle. And Graves has been a champion that we've seen plenty of performance from him on. I mean, we've seen plenty of performance on him. Graves from pretty much every jungler yep. these days. The champion's incredibly popular in the meta. <laughs> yeah. If you can't play Graves, you're probably not here anymore. <laughs> yeah, you're probably not going to be doing a whole lot as Karia goes in in the 2v2 in the bottom yeah, side great. here. Turtle eats a lot of damage. Deadly Flourish not going to find Karia on the back end of that one. So it's definitely a trade win for DRX. Spear just barely goes to the right. It's worth noting that uh, we see Turtle actually doing Cloth plus a bunch of potions as uh, as that start. So it is almost purely physical damage coming out here, you know, from that bottom lane uh, with Deft and Karia playing that Senen plus Pantheon. Uh, he knows that the potential of an all-in is there, and we saw those trades can be quite deadly. So he did have a lot of potions to start this out, you know, starting with four potions as opposed to if you start with a D-Blade, you just have the one. Um, so as a result, he is able to chug all those potions and heal back up, but that's, you know, 200 gold essentially. Uh, already out the window, whereas, you know, Deft hasn't even had to use a potion. So this is where that lane gets a lot more difficult now. Uh, you've used all of your sustain, and you've got to be able to hang on in lane and make sure that you don't give up any more bad trades, because the next bad trade like that may be Turtle going back to base, and that could put you at a pretty heavy CS deficit if it's at a bad timing. Yeah, especially against one of those lanes like you're talking about that likes to go all in when you have the power of the Pantheon. And also consider how good Pantheon is at setting up dives. If they have a big lead in the bottom lane and they can get Pioshik down here and make a big move with Karia oh, going in. Go. But now it's Santorin who's going to be the first jungler getting involved here in the bottom lane. A TP, TP comes from through. They're going to turn things right back around against FlyQuest, but now another TP is going to be showing up. Chovy the first one into the fight. The damage comes down. Santorin goes out. 150 HP remaining as Ignar now gets locked down on the back end of the fight, and FlyQuest will disengage it. Both teams getting real excited to make things bloody here in the bottom lane. As topside, the 1v1 just keeps on bringing the action. Solo tries to walk away, has to flash out to avoid the solo death. Yeah, with his spells on cooldown, despite the fact that Dorn was very low there, he had to back it up, and now he's got to be a bit careful, because if you get hit, by an Empowered Shock Blast, there is always a chance of getting burst down. So in that bottom lane, I do say DRX come out ahead. Uh, they went out as far as the trades in damage. You can see that Turtle had to force the cleanse. Both summoners traded their summoner spells, but no flash used by Pioshik, no summoners used by Deft. Trade of TPs in that mid lane. So pretty evenly contested, but still to the favor of DRX. DRX with a 400 gold lead, just building up these advantages in the laning phase. What you've already talked about bottom lane, what we would expect with Jace versus Orn on the top side. And, you know, we watch matchups in North America and we watch how a lot of teams revolve around needing to do the team fighting, like very basic composition front to back style. And everybody always memes about NA Jace and all this. But one thing that is important, particularly for NA teams, going into international competition like this is being able to address a properly executed composition that uses something like a Jace. It can be very difficult if you're used to going up to going up against a version of this that is not adept to now dealing with DRX, who knows what they're doing with this. Yeah, I mean, and Doran is going to be building more towards the scaling build, more towards the 1v1. It starts like he wants to go towards that tier build pickaxe for the laning phase power, but then that fairy charm leads me to believe this is going to be, you know, Muramana, Manamune, style of build. That is a very powerful scaling build in that side lane, especially in addition to that Conqueror, really looking to take advantage 
of Solo as this game does go further on. And now Solo without TP, you know, Doran was able to push in the lane and actually just straight up walk back because he won out that trade and had the shove. So if Solo actually gets dove here or even just chunked out of lane by Pioshik plus Doran, he is now in quite a lot of trouble being at that TP disadvantage. It's always that second play that yeah. really punishes top laners when you don't have teleport to get back. Mid lane staying pretty even here, but actually a CS lead for Chovy on the Galio, mm -hmm. sitting at 60 farm compared to the 54 of Power of Evil. Panning back to the bottom lane, you can see it's kind of what you were talking about, Isaac. That CS lead starting to pile up a little bit here for DRX with the threat of the Pantheon Senna combo. If Pantheon just point and click press the W, you can here, easily though. follow it up with the Senna. But Santorin at level six slides on in there, drops the smoke screen. Ignar fires off a hook, but wide right means this play is going nowhere. That was a flash prediction hook right there from Ignar, but I think that that's a little bit greedy because Karia doesn't have his flash. So you can actually just try to target the Pantheon instead of trying to go for that juicy target of Deft, right? You know, Deft is already in the shroud. He has the summoner and he has the skill to wait to see, is this gonna land on me before I flash? And he was able to execute on that. So as a result, they get nothing from that jungle pressure. And up on the top side, a plate has already gone down. Solo had to initially back off and now they're looking for a dive. The Ornhorn horn is sounded off. Solo is able to find the knock-up onto Piyoshi, but here comes Galio as well, and surely this is just a death sentence for the FlyQuest top laner. He tries to tank it up, but DRX are way too clean. Bottom side, it's FlyQuest returning the favor on the other okay. end of the map. Power of Evil scoots down here, and it's a four-man play underneath the turret to kill off Karia. Good response from FlyQuest, but I still think DRX is going to get more out of this play. Uh, as we didn't actually see Def pressured off. Santora now trying to wrap around. They're looking for the repeat gank. We'll see if they can pick off Def. This would be huge. First shot hits, second shot misses. TP coming through, and that means Very FlyQuest done. is done here. So Dorian making sure to protect his AD carry and stop FlyQuest from getting more in this trade. But that's actually huge because they forced out Jace's teleport and he got nothing from it. So FlyQuest, another follow-up there to get something more after the play. DRX still ahead, though, as Gyoshik was able to take the Rift Herald during that. He has been farming very efficiently on this Lilia Santora and has been spending more time trying to pressure these lanes a little bit. And as a result, is falling behind in that farm. And you can see DRX you know, out to that 1K or so gold advantage. So here is that initial dive. They know Karia did not have his flash. They target him intelligently first this time overall. Then the regank uh, was was the play I think that really got more because you got the flash out of depth and the TP off of Doran, so you relieve some pressure up on that top side for Orn, you know who can get a free reset, who can kind of uh, refill that HP bar, and you have the ability to maybe punish Deft next time you visit that bot lane. Pioshik with the Rift Herald in inventory still has that one for over three more minutes, and we're only nine and a half minutes on the clock right now. So that means no matter when he drops this, mm -hmm. he will be able to get bonus money for cracking the plates with it. So keep your eyes on DRX, how they rotate between these lanes and where they want to set up this Rift Herald. Do they go for just grabbing the two plates? Do they try to completely knock a turret down with it? With the state of the top, top lane, lane, there's a very likely chance that Bioshik wants to invest it up here to really snowball this advantage that Dorian has even further. I mean, look at the turret. It's almost ready to just be knocked yeah, down completely. And there you go. Shelly summoned up, turret going down, put the money in Doran's pocket. Solo just has to stand <laughs> there. Oh, look at the emote. He knows what's going on. This is not the way that you enjoy top lane gameplay if you're solo. But Doran is weak more than happy lane, about this one. Huge gold lead, man. Two and a half thousand gold for DRX over FlyQuest here just 10 minutes into the game. I mean, they're doing such a good job, right? You know, off of that earlier roam where they made him back off, they'd already taken plates down off the top lane turret. Then you repeat with an already winning lane, already a gold advantage, already got plates off that due to the pressure, and you drop the Herald, and there's just not a lot Solo can do to defend from that position. FlyQuest oh. are trying to make things happen on this bottom side, but it's not enough, and here comes the engage. Carrier engages, but an immediate cleanse coming out from Wild Turtle gets him away from it. Deadly Flourish finds its way onto Chovy's Galio, who will not be able to follow up that engage there with the Predator. So mm -hmm. FlyQuest, they don't give up any kills, but three summoner spells are the price. Flashes on both bottom lane players, as well as Wild Turtle's cleanse, means this duo is now very vulnerable to follow up ganks, follow up aggressive play 
from DRX. Yeah, and I mean, you just have to look at the position in this game, but now maybe getting a pick here on Senna, no flash. Nicely done with a deadly flourish, and Turtle, his aim is true. FlyQuest will find their second kill of the game. I mean, this is great, and that's actually going to lead towards a Dragon, which is very important for FlyQuest, because they need the ability to draw DRX to them. Oh, Chovy trying to go in and make the play on Power of Evil, but now the turnaround coming out from FlyQuest. Remember, DRX is still down a man on the map. Deft has only just now respawned. So although DRX tried to make a play onto the FlyQuest mid laner, the response from the team was enough to keep PoE protected. And now FlyQuest do have priority over this bottom side river. PO Shake is under half HP on a squishy dragon. champion like Alilia. This is very, very risky. If they wanted to try to contest it, they know better. So FlyQuest will take this Drake no contest. And now at 17 minutes, FlyQuest is basically saying, you've got to come fight us. Uh, they're not going to be the happiest, I think, with with the dragon that they actually did roll here. You know, if you got something like an Ocean Soul, for example, then the Orange just starts to shrug off all the split push pressure from the Jace. Uh, Cloud Soul is still very valuable. The move speed is very nice. Uh, the ultimate cooldown reduction is going to be useful for those engages that they're looking to pull off. But it's not that same kind of uh, death knell for DRX if they do give it up. But all the same, FlyQuest now have the ability to try to force this team to come towards them. And it's been very clearly a split map game, but DRX has gotten more from it. The question is just, is the area that they have invested that gold in, you know, as worth it, right? Because it is death now put a little bit behind in this game. And Solo doesn't really care that much if he's down on gold. Like, sure, you would, you would like not to be, but your ultimate button does the same thing, whether you have 10,000 gold or 1,000. And, and let's be honest, that's mostly what it is about. Sound the horn, here's the orn. Solo level 10, so still has a ways to go. Remember, we look at level 13 a lot for this champion because that's when those uh, incredibly powerful Orn enchantments, ornaments, whatever you want to call them, come online. Currently has that Sunfire Cape completed. Yep. We've actually hit the point of the game where a lot of first item power spikes are coming through. DRX with three men in the bottom lane. They got Pioshik shadowing them, just counter jungling right now. But in the middle lane, it's Power of Evil making the plays, bringing out the Emperor's Divide. But now it's going to be turned around and PoE shut down by Doran. They try to get the pick there on Doran, but Chovy is in position to help him. And meanwhile, they're just losing this turret on that bot side. Turtle is getting something on the top side, but DRX 3,000 gold ahead are getting so much more with their pressure. They've been more efficient with the plays. They've been getting more of an advantage with that top lane matchup. And the fact that Doran is building towards it as well is going to make it so difficult for Solo. He has the Black Cleaver. He's got that Muramana stacking up. And he really is looking like he's in a great position so far this game. I'm going to be interested to see if Solo does the double Sunfire build. Um, you know, that can sometimes be a, a, a look if you don't feel that you need the MR. But FlyQuest oh getting caught boy. outside. Here they come. Look at the power of the long range engage, plus the follow up from the Senna. DRX making it look no easy. tower. Uh oh, Graves is looking a little bit sleepy right about now as Piotr goes in. Watch out, Ape! Here they come, it's Galio arriving with the grand entrance. Let's see if they can follow this one up with enough damage. Santorin still trying to get himself away. Caria is over the wall, he's got the spear. He doesn't even need it. Piyoshik is on the board. DRX are just running over this game. Their engages have been so good. The plays feel like they have such a high success rate from this team. They have constantly been punishing FlyQuest if they take one step too far in any of the lanes. And they have got so much playmaking. The ability to continue to extend this lead is enormous, and it's already nearly 5,000 gold. You'll note Chovy, not only is he playing Predator, but he went for the Lucidity Boots for the lower cooldown on his summoner spells and the additional cooldown reduction. He grabbed that early proto belt. He picked up the Fiendish Codex. So he is ready to go here. And we have a replay up on that top side. Jin in a 1v1 against Jace. That is not a 1v1 you can win <laughs> with those Ew. items. Not even close. Not at all. That is... Uh... <laughs> We're not really going to call that a 1v1. That's more of one dude getting bullied by the other dude. <laughs> as DRX has themselves a nearly 5,000 gold lead. And a couple minutes ago, Mr. Azale, when FlyQuest was able to claim that second Drake, you said that FlyQuest is now demanding DRX, hey, come meet us, come fight us. And if you're DRX, you're like, sure. oh, you are RSVP. Yeah. See you there, that bud. invitation. You are more than happy to go to that party 
here in just over one minute because it is such an easy fight when you're that far ahead. Yeah. When you have the power that this team has right now. It's true. And, and you know, FlyQuest is going to be dependent upon playmaking. Can you get a really good sort of engage, an initial punch to kill off one of these squishy members? If you can kill off Jace right off the start of the fight, then maybe you have a chance. But otherwise, I mean, the kids have been scrapping down on that bottom lane. You got a slight edge on Wild Turtle. But Papa Dorian's coming down for the top lane, and he is going to be here for this fight. That is where the gold is on DRX, and he is going to be ready to flex his muscles. They're already pressuring the inhibitor tower here at 16 minutes. Solo has been out on his own in this tough matchup, and Doran, with the help of Pioshik as well as Chovy, they have just snowballed this top lane expertly, and they are building to crush it. Yeah, Solo's in a spot that it is real hard to do much at all from. Still two levels away from getting those upgrades on the items. Doran with the TP to join up with the rest of the squad. Death Sentence flies out, but it will not find the mark onto anyone. Wild Turtle looking to get away, but now he's in some trouble. Loses half HP. Pioshik hit by the Deadly Flourish. Turtle's opening up the curtain call. The bullets fly through, but they're not quite finding their target. Chovy doing a good job blocking those up, channeling the taunt just to make sure nobody's able to collapse on him while he blocks those bullets, blocks those skill shots up. FlyQuest has lost significant amounts of HP. Pioshik's still at about half, but DRX knows they've won this engagement well enough to take priority over the bottom side river and take that third Drake. Exactly. I think FlyQuest is pretty smart to just back it up after you don't get a kill on that initial play. And if you sound the horn and you didn't kill someone on the other team, it's pretty much time to leave. When you're this far behind in gold, that is really your only hope with that initial burst of CC to knock someone down and then try to fight onwards at a more equal state, right? If you try to walk forward into this squad, you will get kited back, you will get run down, and FlyQuest are really up against it here. I'll give them you know, maybe one more shot at this next team fight, and I think that's probably going to be their hope is one great engage around an objective or DRX right. are just going to bleed you out of this game because the gold lead has continued to expand. FlyQuest are trying to make counter punches where they can, but Doran's nearly on three items here. You know, Solo is, is just scraping up pieces for a second. You know, he's been really starved of experience as well, so the ornaments have not come through. He is not even close to being able to upgrade for his teammates, and it's, it's going to make it very, very difficult for them going forward. Yeah, I think that big team fight you're talking about happens when we see Power of Evil hit the Leanders. Oh no, Wild Turtle. Okay, he barely gets away there using the flash, but now once again, you're a Jin. You're an immobile AD carry with no flash to get away from a team that has a Pantheon Galio combination with Lilia and Jace to follow up and Senna's ulti that'll just blast right through. Very difficult situation, but yeah, we need to see these second item power spikes come through for the solo laners of FlyQuest. We need to see that Gargoyle stone plate get completed for Ignar so that if he needs to jump into the middle of everyone, he can do so without being immediately evaporated by the damage of DRX. And even then, with all these conditionals, with all these what ifs, it's still such an uphill battle from a 6,000 gold deficit at 19 minutes. Rift Herald summoned up in the mid lane. Remember, DRX used the first one of these oh. to claim the turret topside for first turret. Lots of damage from the powered shock blast and the Lilia bowling ball, but here comes the Orn Horn. Plenty of damage down onto Death, but not enough to kill him. And that's all that matters. FlyQuest have lost half the health on Santorin and PoE. They will continue to defend the Tier 1 turret, but DRX confidently moving forward. I mean, look at the positioning. Doran's just looking for Shock Blast snipes over the wall. Pioshik is looking for Swirl Seeds. Chovy is threatening the flank. There is no chance you can actually defend that tower now from that position, not even having the Orn ultimate. So DRX are just expertly navigating this. They're playing it out so incredibly well finding advantages without having to hard commit to a fight. They are not going to commit to a fight until they know they are going to win it for sure. And they are just extending this gold lead further and further and further, bleeding FlyQuest out of this game before FlyQuest is ever going to have a chance at getting that 5v5 that they really wanted in this game. And what reason would they have to take a fight that they're not absolutely sure on, right? None. When you look at the way the lanes are set up, at the way the draft played out, Jace has been slamming Orn the entire time. The bottom lane with that kill pressure, that threat of the Senna and the Pantheon has had the advantage for DRX in the bottom lane. Yes, mid lane's been mostly even, but then when we consider the point you made earlier, Isaac, about Santorin needing to try to interfere in these side lanes to give them some breathing room, Pioshik is also ahead of his counterpart. So when 
four out of five players on DRX are just ahead by default, you just set that sucker on cruise control and you have a great time moving forward because the lead just builds passively. Exactly, and Power of Evil's doing fine, you know, he's got farm, but so is Chovy. Chovy, and Chovy has been everywhere. He's been roaming around the map, pressuring, you know, looking for dives, threatening engages, forcing cooldowns, and he has been so good thus far in this game, building for playmaking, building to be a facilitator here, and putting himself in a position to really succeed. He even picks up the double stopwatch, so he has stopwatch plus zone. Oh, that's disgusting. So he can just go in for this all-out play. You know, if, if you're DRX here and you're saying, all right, FlyQuest gets one more chance and it's this next dragon fight, well, Chovy already forced the flash off Wild Turtle. So now you can just kind of go on this on this suicide dive where you just charge in the back line, double stasis, and you have to respect this zone of control that Chovy will create. And that buys so much time for the other four members on his team to just clean up everybody. Five seconds feels like an eternity in League of Legends. Playing against someone going hourglass into stopwatch back to back. You hear the stasis noise haunting your <laughs> nightmares. It is just wake up not in a cold sweat here. A good experience at all. Solo is hit level 13, but in a situation we do not often see, that second item is not yet even completed. So you can see him bonking the hammer right now, trying to get that ready to go, building towards the abyssal mask so we can have that. So that'll be pretty important here. Also, now level 14 means he can upgrade one of his teammates' items, probably the Infinity Edge for Wild Turtle. Turtle is on that two-item power spike. Power of Evil now on his as well. So at least for FlyQuest, they hit the items in time for the fight. But now it's about execution. Now it's about a 7,000 gold deficit. Now it's about DRX just making this game more and more unlosable for themselves. Kiyoshik in the pit all alone. The rest of the team has control. Look at the ward line, man. Look at the enemy jungle. Look at FlyQuest's red buff and how many wards are around the thing. DRX is making sure they're doing this cleanly. Yep. And I think FlyQuest kind of realized that they really do just have that one more fight in them, you know, as, as I was kind of talking about. So they've decided, all right, we're just going to give this one up. We're going to wait until it is a soul. We're going to wait until it is a Baron to try to fight for. Second Cloud Dragon, not where they want to kind of draw their line in the sand and, and bet their game on, bet really right. very likely their, their entire world hopes on, uh, as it would take a miracle, you know, for them to be able to, to get out. I didn't even think they could uh, from that point. So they know they've got maybe one more shot and they're going to wait. We'll see if DRX can now navigate up towards the Baron as we're getting further and further into this game. Try to use Doran down on the bottom side to draw pressure and look to be able to threaten towards a Baron because Doran is going to require a response very likely from multiple members. You know, he is insanely ahead. Yes. You know, his tier item's fully stacked. He's got the cleaver, the ghost blade. He's building towards the Lord Dominix to really shred solo. And you know, we talked about the Conqueror, so that's helping him out too. And if you send two members down to try to answer him on the bottom side, well, DRX can probably just start up the Baron. You know, it's a very safe clear. It's not fast, but utilizing Senna for that sustain uh, does make it pretty easy to keep threatening it. DRX prowling through the enemy jungle, sitting down multiple wards, stealing away the buffs, taking control of the entirety of Summoner's Rift. Maybe there'll be a chance for them to look for a play here. Doesn't really appear so. But let me go ahead and just give everybody some fun stats here. Fun if you're a fan of DRX, not so fun if you're a fan of FlyQuest. But if you're looking at this game as a more and more likely DRX win, and DRX walk away from this one with the dub, there are 32 possible remaining scenarios for the remaining five games of the day. Of those 32 scenarios, FlyQuest has two where they can get themselves a tiebreaker if they lose this game. So things become very bleak for North America's last remaining representative if DRX win this game. They also become very bleak for Unicorns of Love, who will be slightly better off than FlyQuest, but would have three remaining scenarios yeah, where they would then get a tiebreak. And they would have to 3-0, you know, it becomes things that are, are kind of out of your hands for both Highly of these unlikely. teams, right? It becomes very, very unlikely. So FlyQuest definitely going to try to win this game. We'll see if they're going to be able to do it. Uh, the, even the experience is becoming such a problem for FlyQuest because they're getting kind of just choked out of their own jungle. I mean, compare Ignar to the soul laners. 
it's level 8 on the Thresh. How are you even supposed to find an engage on a level 16 Jace? <laughs> like, this guy auto attacks you and you die, right? Like, the, the experience advantage are so enormous because Ignar, you know, from this losing position, is, is trying to stay away and give that experience to Turtle, give that experience yeah. to his carries, and play exclusively for vision, right? So he's just constantly buying wards, he's trying to sweep out areas, he's trying to not steal experience. So I do think it is the correct play, but it just makes your job as that Thresh so incredibly difficult, you know, being that outpaced. You know, even Santorin down four levels on Dorian. Okay, here we go. Death Sentence comes out from Ignar. Carriot is the target, but he buys a ton of time with the shield. Turtle running away, TP coming through. FlyQuest falling back, and Solo continues chasing forward, looking for some sort of an opportunity on Dechovi, who goes into the stasis and gets himself out. Deadly Flourish and Ornalty coming through, but they won't quite be able to find a kill. DRX is low health on multiple players, but the same can be said for FlyQuest. Pioshik's able to make the play. There goes the sleep. There comes the Senna ulti. Power of Evil's the first one to fall. And here comes Carrier right back into the fight. Looking for the kill on to Ignar off to the left. He's able to find it. He's able to grab the kill on to Santorin, and Doran picks up another. Fly Quest is destroyed, and DRX will win this fight without a single death. Nicely played there from DRX, and Chovy even on the hunt for Turtle. Oh, he's Stays found him. Behold the Turtle. He cannot do it. They are simply too far behind. The ace for DRX into the Baron. It is a 10,000, make it 11,000 gold lead. And carry it, the Pantheon, the support who got quote unquote picked at the start, continuing to mount this push afterwards. DRX just so far ahead in this game. It was a good start from FlyQuest. They forced some summoners, they got that stopwatch out of the way, but then as they try to find this opportunity onto Pioshik, look at flashing in, three-man drowsy into the stopwatch, Galio flies in over top, and Power of Evil does not have cleanse. Power of Evil does not have QSS. No way to get out of that. Everyone just piles on top of him. He was the major threat. Yes, Turtle survived with his cleanse flash, but there was no way out for the Azir, and he had to be the guy to carry the fight. So DRX knew it. They eliminated him from the game, and really they have eliminated all of FlyQuest's chances from this position. A 13,000 gold lead. DRX can easily close this one out. Yeah, this Baron power play should just be the end of the game here as DRX will be able to pick up the next Drake of the game. Total gold, you can see right there, 15,000 for That's Doran, insane. almost triple what Ignar has. And one thing I want to point out with this gold graph on the screen, Carry is the second poorest person in the game because he's a support, it makes sense. But Carry, if you want to look up how to play support like a Chad, go watch that last team fight replay again. He jumps in there at the very end with his ulti, 1v2 into Santorin who is a Graves, who you would think could just one-shot him, uses the E with the perfect timing to make sure he stays alive, and with 50 oh, HP left, left, gets the auto attack on a Santorin to get the kill. Honestly, yeah. DRX playing these team fights so well. The Shock Blast, as you point out, say goodbye to half your HP if even one of those connects. DRX now with a pincer attack. Four men in the mid lane, one in the bottom lane. The Jace is able to just dismantle the turret. He's nearly full build. He's five and a half items. Ignar's got 400 health. Caria on the front line, looking for the potential engage there. Power of Evil stepping away from the Senna CC. And FlyQuest will lose their first inhibitor. Yeah, the inhibitor's gonna go down, no contest there. 14,000 gold lead for DRX. Enormous amounts of experience advantage. FlyQuest are just trying to hope for a miracle here. Hope that they can hold the line and continue to farm it out. Pray for that late game, but DRX are not gonna give them the opportunity to do it. Closing down on another inhibitor. The top lane is already pushing, so they could go around the horn here and look to triple and hit FlyQuest, but here comes the engage. Deft. Disengaging, trying to get himself out of this one. The curtain calls opened up and the railguns fired off. Doran dominating with the kill on to Solo as Power of Evil tries to protect himself, but the Emperor's Divide will not keep the kingdom standing. DRX pushing right on to the Nexus turrets. Wild Turtle barely hobbling away as Chovy moves forward and the winds of war will blow FlyQuest away. Carry is into the wrong fountain, but the man don't give a damn. Take a shower and it don't matter. DRX with an absolute destruction of FlyQuest will take their win.
This was incredible stuff here from DRX. Such a master class on how to play through top lane from the build to the runes to how Pioshik and Chovy were able to actually split the map and snowball that lane incredibly effectively here against Solo. It was such a difference from that last game where we had Solo in this tank versus tank matchup yep. against Doran. Doran picks for the lane, is enabled expertly by his team. And FlyQuest was not able to get anywhere close to the same lead on that bottom side that they were looking to attack. Deft as well as Caria held up valiantly on the weak side of the map. And DRX, let's be honest, they made this one look pretty easy, extending the gold lead constantly, you know, eking out experience advantages everywhere they could. Uh, they really did look like an incredible, incredible team here today. Yeah, DRX was the better team. I don't really know what else to say about it. The draft was coherent. The gameplay got done exactly what they needed. The leads built up steadily over the course of the game. They never made any unnecessary errors. When we go back and we look at that first game between these two teams, people look at the botched engage from Ignar near the Rift Herald mm -hmm. that was sort of that turning point where DRX was able to take the game back into their control. But there never was a moment like that in this one where DRX lost control of that win that they were working towards. It was just start to finish a DRX game. And while we wait for game two, you can listen to Get Jinxed on the League of Legends official playlist during the Spotify